Welcome to the series where I test out the OSR's wiki money making guides. I started this series almost a year ago and since then we've tried out multiple methods even if they're a little silly such as picking bananas or even flax. If you enjoy these types of videos then feel free to check out the playlist that I've made for them and feel free to leave a suggestion down in the comments for a method that you'd like to see tested. With that being said, let's get into the video. So here we are in Edgeville once again for another moneymaker from the wiki. Today we will be charging Earth Orbs, which is our last orb to charge. We've already made videos on the other three, so if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to check them out. Now before we start, as for the gear setup, all we're using is our Staff of Earth and our Max Cape for teleports. Now if you don't have a Max Cape, it's recommended to bring Amulets of Glory since they can teleport you directly to this spot right here. And uh, you'll probably want some Stamina Potions as well if you're not teleporting to your POH since you are going to be doing a bit of running. But since we have this cape, we'll just hit our pull every time we go to our house and then come back here. So we should be good. Um, as for the bank setup, uh, all we have are just two items. I have cosmic runes and I have the unpowered orbs. I have my X value set to 81. So whenever I come and bank, all I have to do is deposit all of the orbs that I have here. Hit this once to get the runes for the casts and then hit this and it has a full inventory of the unpowered orbs. I only have 81 because I'm only bringing the amount of cosmic runes that we need uh, for this one trip. If you want to, you could bring your whole stack, but remember, we are going to be in the wilderness, so if you get attacked and killed, you're gonna lose your entire stack. So that's why we're only bringing 81. But that is pretty much it for this moneymaker. Let's go ahead and just jump right in. So as for the method for this moneymaker, it's very simple. We're simply teleporting to Edgeville, going underground, following the path you just saw right there to the Earth Obelisk, and then charging all of our Earth Orbs. It's pretty chill considering you only have to cast a spell once to power up your entire inventory, so that is pretty nice. It's definitely something you can do on the side while watching a show or even playing another account. Now it is important to remember that this is the wilderness so you can be attacked, but with what we're bringing, we're really not risking anything, so it's really not worth it for a PK or to attack us. And I think they know that, so if we were to get attacked, it's just to mess with us. Now like I said earlier, we are using the Max Cape for this just because I'm a little bit lazy and I don't feel like having to get glories and stamina potions. Um, but for most people, I think they would go the glory and stamina potion route. And I'd say that's better. You're more likely to get more orbs charged per hour instead of using a cape that has you teleport to your POH first and, you know, go from there. I think you're wasting more time by doing that, but it shouldn't be too much of a big difference. Now, as you may have noticed already, we are running through the Chaos Druids and you might want to go around them if you don't have Protect Mage on. Um, they do cast the Entangle spell or Snare spell, whichever one is the lowest one, I forget which one it is. But um, yeah, that can be quite annoying when you're trying to run to the Obelisk and they're just casting that on you. I think it took like 15 minutes for, the, for them to actually catch a spell on me. So once that happened, I just started using uh, Protect Mage every time I ran through there. And then I realized I had enough prayer points to actually keep it on the entire time since I was going to my POH to restore anyways. So I just left it on and never took it off after quite some time. Now, like I said, you can go around them to avoid the Chaos Druids, but I think you're just wasting more time that way since you have to go all the way around instead of just running straight through. Um, or maybe it's the same and I'm just crazy, but yeah, I always ran through them because it seemed like it was a faster way to do it. Now, unfortunately, those aren't the only monsters you have to be wary of. Um, the next big one is the spiders. They are poisonous, so having antidotes in your bank might be helpful. Um, I didn't end up using them until about halfway in whenever one of the spiders actually hit me with poison, so that's whenever I drank the antidote, and it's really not a huge deal because the antidote plus plus I think lasts like 12 minutes, and they're not very expensive, so I would definitely use those. Originally, I was going to just protect melee every time I ran through there, but then I remembered that melee doesn't actually prevent poison from happening even though they hit zeros they can still actually infect you with poison so you will need some sort of anti-poison and you would think that since we're using the poh we wouldn't need antidote since we're hitting the restoration pool every time we bank anyways but it's not really for the health that we're doing this it's because it interrupts the spell that we're casting on the obelisk uh, like i said earlier it's just one cast and you can afk the full inventory until you take a tick of damage from either poison or something else 
it interrupts your spell, so you have to cast it once again. So it's just annoying, and the antidotes kind of prevent that from happening. So yeah, not 100% needed, but it is nice. And speaking of other forms of damage besides poison, there is a very high level demon in this room. So if it wasn't already obvious, we do go to the other side of the obelisk, so he can't attack us. And it only took me about 50 minutes to realize that Winter Todd is right next to this area. Well, not really. Uh, I thought it was Winter Todd at first, but I realized that it was way too far to be Winter Todd. And uh, it's actually the museum in Falador, which to be fair is also kind of far away. But yeah, it's just the museum. As you can see, there's also a Scatizo display and I think a Master Clue display. So that was pretty neat to see, uh, something that I don't think we'd normally see without the render distance being extended a little bit, so yeah, it's always neat to find some random room in a dungeon. Also, just want to give a shout out to this person who is charging air orbs. I saw somebody run into my room with not an earth staff and I knew something was up, but uh, luckily they were just a fan of the vids. But with that being said, that is pretty much it for this moneymaker. Let's go ahead and take a look at how many earth orbs we were able to charge in this one hour. So after one hour of charging these earth orbs, we are left with 540 for a total price check of 747,000 GP. Let's go ahead and head over to the GE and sell them off. Um, let me see. 13, 40. We lose a bit, but that's fine. Some of them came through, so I guess we'll just leave them in there for 1340. And uh, we'll come back when they're all done selling. So here we are. Took less than an hour for all of the earth orbs to sell off. So yeah, not very long. And uh, yeah, not bad. As for the total profit for this moneymaker, if we take into account the cost of supplies, which was 232,745 GP, Subtract that from the money we made, which was 716,580 GP. That gives us a grand total profit of 483,835 GP from one hour of charging these earth orbs. So yeah, not bad for a pretty chill moneymaker. Of course, it is in the wilderness, but I mean, the chances of getting attacked, I'd say, are very low. So yeah. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and thank you to all of my channel members, with a special thanks to ACR Beans. Once again, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next episode.